My name's Jay, Jay Essex, This Life Anyway. Also, I'm actually the one they call Pahana, the one of uh, Hopi Indians are waiting to come back to talk to him. The idea is that one of their old brothers, uh, I was a Hopi elder, or Opi elder, a long time ago. And I, let, I took off, um, went out off towards the east into the rising sun. And I told them I would be back eventually and I would tell them the truth, that I'd finally be telling everyone the truth of what exists on the other side. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Uh, I was also with other past lives. Uh, I go back to the beginning. Um, my energy is creator energy, it's not soul. Nothing's any better than anything else, it's just what it is. Uh, I need to get this on video, but I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, rain is wonderful, but it's just rain. Uh, sunshine's wonderful, but it's just sunshine. It's just uh, there are pieces of the whole plan. Everything has uh, a function, a reason. And uh, 2012, December 21st, 2012 is when I kept telling through all these lives, uh, Pahana, uh, Quetzalcoatl, uh, Kukulkan, uh King Tut, just a whole lot of them talking about how people would never see the world the same. Uh, that's all I said. There's nothing about this light comes and saves everyone. There's nothing about the world comes to an end. There's nothing about anything. I said people will never perceive the world the same. I'm telling you people, the more you see, the more you're aware of, the more you feel, understand, the more, th the simpler things are. Is part of the whole point of me being here. Um, one last time. I told you many lives here, two of them in particular, that I would come back and I would tell you the truth of creation. And that's how it was put. Um, the earlier life, uh, the, the, these are the two that are the strongest. I've done it many lives, but these are the two that were very strong. Uh, they actually had legends about it, uh, no big deal, I'm not a big deal, it's just whatever. Um, it was Quetzalcoatl, okay, uh, Kasselkan or something they've called me, Kulkakan or something like that, and called a few things. Anyway, uh, I was a uh, Knip Panich or something, whatever, I was a Toltec king, uh, they, thank you, um, the white guy, the tall, white, slender, um, Toltec king that had a beard, which is unlike the red race. And when I left, I was on a, took off on a raft into the ocean, and I said, I'll be coming back from the east. I took off to the east. I said, I'll be coming back, and I'll be bringing you all this information and stuff, and then... I'd done some pretty trick stuff that life. I was pretty strong. And, uh... So anyway, they turned it out over time to make it more than what it was. I gave everyone uh, really good stuff. Uh, uh, gutters, science for astronomy and stuff like that. Um, did a lot to help them. And also, uh... Oh, there's a reason why I was white and had a beard, okay? I was different from somewhere else that was brought there. Uh, that's another story that doesn't need to be told. Um, and the other one was, uh, the other life was Pahana, uh, the Hopi elder that was white. And I was Indian, I was just white. I was born there. Hopi uh, flesh and blood. I just came out white. No beard, nothing. And the le legend was, I went off to the east and I come back uh, from the east, the white brother, is what they called me. 
and I would tell them the truth of creation and uh, its beginnings and stuff. Look it up for yourself. You'll find out. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm really connected to those lives, and that's one of the big reasons. You have to have this information. Not everyone has to have it, but if you want to wake up, if you want to be aware, if you want to communicate with each other, you have to have this information. It's a basis of thought. It's language by pictures. But it's a whole lot easier than hieroglyphics. Nothing is any better than anything else, period. The fact that you exist gives you rights. You don't have to be on this piece of land, that planet, in this star system, that star system. doesn't matter. You exist. You're in creation. You have rights. And there's something that's really powerful that's just taken over that controls that. That's what's inside of me. It's called Ara, the primary and initial focal point of creation's protector. That was me before any of uh, y'all who were separated to become into... Uh, to become yourselves, spirit beings, sentient energy. I'm very old. My other, the other half of me, uh, Lily, she's incredibly old. The primary focal point of Lily, that's outside of body, uh, she's uh, had a little over 8.9 trillion lives. I've had a little over 10.846 trillion lives. Um, because of I was made to serve and protect the original first being, there's a first dimension with three new beings coming out of it, and a fourth one that's already become sentient, but it's in the early stages. They're already in there. They'll be coming out pretty soon, but... We think of soon, when we're in a physical body, everything happens so quick and it has such a drastic effect on us. We think of it as immediate. That's how, that's how we need to go through our lives here. But when we're not in one of, the, one of these bodies, trying to drive it and going through hell doing so, um, fighting all the situations we're put into um, that were designed to not just frustrate, but to abuse us to make us bigger for the original first being male and female. That's in the books. I've said it too many times. The original first being is dead. It's gone, destroyed. The original first angels, those love, loving things. No. Uh, if if you need to stay alive and something was happening, they keep you alive. They've been dimensions, everything else. They bend your energy in and out of dimensions to keep you, keep car from hitting you. But if it's time for you to go, if it's time for you to break your leg, if it's time for your um, family to die in a fire, they, they made it happen. It was the will of Almighty God. There's, there's no God. It never has been. Just the original first being male and female. No Satan. It's all sad. Anyway, all that information is in the books. Let me just show you something real quick in summary. I put together this information uh, for you. For you to use, to find yourself, to become yourself. And where do you come from? Who the hell are you? What are you? What happens? How are you born? What happens when you die? Everything's in the books. Everything you could possibly want. You have a question? It's in these books. If it's real, I mean, you know, what horse is going to win next Saturday? I don't know. Um, what football team's going to win in three years? I don't know. I don't care. It's not important. Okay? What's important is everything. Not every little thing that happens, but everything that exists. That's my important. Okay? Um, the first book, Creation is Beginning and Your Origin. Who we are and where we came from. This book tells you how it all began. It tells you about the first dimension and everything else. I don't know how this thing is facing. I um, don't have my glasses on. This book is where it starts. The the, the fae, um, stars and planets, they they all have spirit inside them. Where the first creation, where, where did the, um, the this dimension, a third dimension come from? What are the dimensions? 
There's so much garbage going on about dimensions, man. It makes me sick. We're elevating into the fifth dimension. The people that say that don't make me sick. The thought process does. How does anyone... What's the best that any of us can do? Is the best we can with what we have? Ta da um, Sometimes it seems like a man of people scolded. No, I'm not. I'm so frustrated that, that this has happened. The very first life I ever had, it was Lily and I. The very first life. And we were destroyed in less than 10 hours, ripped apart by like, velociraptors on steroids. I'm source, clean source. So is Lily. So anyway, uh, so I got out of that body. Lily and I were shredded. We, we, were eyes made, our eyes made contact while pieces of us were flying around everywhere. We got a glimpse at each other. That was made to happen on purpose. So that I, and the original first being male and female wanted us the original first being, which had separated into two different parts to, that were the same, but yet a little bit different. So they'd have companionship because they were so lonely. They were the first. I understand that. That's where male and female comes from. These new first beings don't have that issue. They have company. What's going to happen? They're all going to be in separate areas, uh, dimensions as they first start developing and then will come together, but only after these physical bodies go, which is going to happen in about 2,000 uh, 2, years. Uh, what was in uh, Nostradamus is uh, the next focal point that's trying to come off of me to you know gain its own independence, and it will soon. Oh, there's a set there's a there's one that's almost there's one that's close to ready and a second and, and another one after that that's getting ready to come off i call it my number two and number three part of myself um how do you understand all this stuff when well, you can't you have to wake up um someone said jay you know someone that knew me Talk, listen to me for a while and began to see things understand things for yourself he goes jay what are you doing here now i mean people aren't ready and i said what what better time to come it never should have been like this by the way lily and i after what we went through we got out of the body i went up to the original first being male and female and this is as energy but if this was physical bodies it'd be like taking my backhand and smacking them both right in the face hard as i could I shot him with some hard energy. When they made me, I was the strongest thing there was anywhere. They made me to protect them. They were going to put me through lives and I would grow, get bigger and bigger. They just never knew how big I get, and how strong I get, and how quick it happened. Lily was the same. She and I are made out of fortitude and love. Um, you won't hardly ever hear me say the word hope. Um, I don't have hope. I create. I'm a thing of action. Something needs to happen, I make it happen. I just can't do that much while I'm in a body, but I've done more this life than any one of than any of the rest of them, although my last life, I was I was the I'm the spirit that was inside Gandhi. This body, this is John David Essex. Okay, I've always called myself J. Essex. My father was John, I'm different, okay? It's, that's nothing bad said about anybody. It's just he's him and I'm me. I'm not him, so that's why I wanted to have my own name, but no. Uh, uh, they adopted me when I was 10. The military had me before that, or the government, I should say. I was When I was born, I was left at the hospital for good reason. Well, this was set up to be this way, and they had me for a while. They read my energy, so they said, holy shit. We're going to get this guy and experiment, make a Mars and everything. And as a newborn, just about newborn infant, I started tearing shit up. <laughs> Stuff flying off the walls. They let go of me. People, I'm going in other people's brains and bodies and doing all kinds of stuff. I can't do what I want when I want. I'm not here for that. And I'm definitely not here to be telekinetic and throw stuff around. But these new kids that I've had, yeah. They're powerful as shit. You wait and see what they do. Dan and I have had 48 children together. Um, 
uh, with the help of Sereni, a beautiful ET. Uh, hers, uh, she's um, Serpoian. Uh, Mele, uh, she's awesome. She's her patient is the name they gave us. They, they, like, they have exact names, but it's like Mele. She's like a um, uh, she's a, a, a newer generation of ant. It is what they call the ant people uh, in the Hopi thing. I remember that. I was Pahana. I've been a lot of people. I've always done what I could to pull people together. It's Gandhi, look what I did. I didn't do it by myself, but I damn near did. Freed of India. And then what happened at the end? The original first being male and female destroyed it. They had the Muslim come in and take over. It didn't matter who it was. I'm not picking on a religion. They all suck. They're all full of shit. Okay, period. It's bullshit. Every one of them. You know it's not? You. Who you are, the frequencies inside you that make you, that's who you are. The love and compassion you have, power, power that'll blow your mind. I've had lives, a lot of them, but a lot of them where I would talk about coming back and giving everyone the truth of what's on the other side. Pahana. I was Hopi Indian, but we were like Pueblo. We lived up in the mountains. I, I mean, on the cliffs, mountains. I remember standing there and then looking off the, this ledge and just seeing beautiful sunset. But then you walk up to a ladder and the ladder's, you know, almost straight up and down. And my daughter was over there. It had been ra it had rained, and we thought that to be a major blessing. There was a little puddle of water right there in the ground. It was still moist. Caves mostly rock, so the water would stay there a little bit longer. But there's dirt up there too. Wind blows dirt around. The rock decays. Then my wife was there. Um, anyway, uh, also, uh, uh, Quetzalcoatl, Kinich, Pinich, something or other. I was a white, tall, white, tall tech, uh, I don't, I don't like the word, use the word king, but that's what they call it. It's like a government title. Both those lives, I said, I, you know, as Pahan, I, I, it was said I was going to the east. I was white then, too. The white brother was going to the east to die. And that he'd be coming back from the east. He would return. And he would bring the wisdom of what's on the other side, and he would bring some type of solidity for creation. But he would, most importantly, bring the wisdom of what actually exists in the universe. And the way it was set up, I was going to come back with some stones. It's like, give half to one person, keep the other half, you know, the tablet thing, and... That's pretty funny. I left there. I got just over 20 miles out of town and a Spaniard and some kind of real heavy uh, uh, cart, wagon, wheel, but it's not, it's weird laden down with heavy metal gold and stuff. I don't mean all full of gold. I mean, it was a heavy wagon. There was gold and stuff in it, some a little bit on it. And I guess uh, Conquistador or whatever the guy was. It's about four. And one guy, the main guy, and then there's uh, three, four Navajo that were there.
there were three Navajo and a fourth one that was like a servant, personal servant for the conquistadors, whatever the hell they were, Spaniards. And they literally, uh, the Navajo, they just, they beat the hell out of me, all of them did, and then uh, gutted me, <laughs> right there and then and there. But before they did, they took the stones, some other stuff that I had, so quote unquote sacred relics, and stomped them into the ground. They eventually found their way back to little pieces here, pieces there, to the village. The Navajo Indians that were with them, they keep the pieces of it and sold it, traded it back to the Hopi for money. little piece here, a little piece there, nobody knew what the hell it was. Anyway, uh, as uh, Quetzalcoatl, I took off from the east coast of uh, Central America, as we call it, on a raft, died at sea. Um, but the idea was I'd be coming back from the east and I'd be bringing the knowledge of what's on the other side. I got so tired of how everything was on the other side. I talk about it all the time with uh, the main people in uh, my own little private group of uh, folks. I have my own personal guard and stuff like that. And the legend came about Quetzalcoatl, Coco Can, they call me sometimes, so these stupid things. About uh, coming back when it was time and bringing the wisdom of what actually exists everywhere and that things would be, uh, that he'd be happy with what he saw. The legend said that he'd be happy with what he saw or he would kill creation. Well, honestly, that's relative to what's been going on, but it's changing creation, killing a format. There is very powerful community out there, in spite of the war and stuff that's always been going on, and the ones that have been backing everyone, backing physical creation more than anyone else, is the Drock, and number two right next to them, or the antids, what I call the antids. I, I call them antids because that's the the wording from uh, uh, Hopi, Hopi times. I had a very powerful Hopi life. And uh, actually got a lot done, although I spent the whole thing like this one sad about the way things are. Um, and uh, they were called the antids. If you look at Hopi le uh, legend, and read about the antids you'll understand and there were some that brought people to the antids all the time and the antids take them down into the ground and feed them uh, take care of them i want you to know what's going on i can't i told you many lives most of my indian lives that i would come back and i would tell you what's going on on the other side and here and everything else okay two and two of those lives that are really uh, strong were pahana uh, and uh, the Quetzalcoatl, I can't hardly even say that properly, but the uh, Pahana and Quetzalcoatl, um, Hopi Indian, Pahana was my last one. Anyway, uh, uh, the last, the life that I had where I uh, was talking very strongly about coming back here, uh, there's a legend about Pahana somewhere about uh, uh, the, the white brother from the east or yeah the white brother from the east is going to come back and bring us the information we'll know him by the stones he carries and everything and it's a big thing about the stones uh i i barely got over 20 miles away from the hopi village when it took off i knew it was going to be killed anyway and it was on the road and i got stopped by this um whatever like a conquistador or something a spanish guy and he had uh uh, three uh, Navajo, uh, two of them were Navajo. Well, one of them was pure Navajo, the other two were part Navajo and something else. Anyway, uh, they got at me, killed me, uh, uh, stomped on everything, took it, threw it away, broke it. Um, 
Bahana didn't make it too far east. Um, anyway, uh, I kept saying I'd come back and just tell you that's all. It's, it's my job. It's part of my job. And I'm almost done, so folks, um, I'm just trying to leave you with some stuff that'll help. You know, if you don't like it, good. Turn it off. If you didn't like it, you turned it off before now anyway. I was Bacal. I was Pahana. I was George Washington. I was Joan of Arc. I was the craziest samurai woman there ever was. Forgot her name from the first war. Uh, Pachukuri Inkyupanki, the mermaid king. That was in Lemuria. That was uh, Neptune. And uh, Poseidon was in Atlantis. As a uh, regular human, four legs, I mean, two legs, two arms, four limbs. Poseidon actually means earth shaker. Anyway, what, uh, I've had important jobs while here, but the most important one was this one. So I know who I am. I don't care what other people say. Um, the more you become yourself, you're going to feel the same way. The more your friends see that in you, eventually it's going to help the ones worth the, um, talking to uh, wake up for themselves. Going through my life, becoming what, realizing who I am, what I am, doing my job, and you asked earlier what my job is. My job was to come here and literally finally kill the original first being, male and female, number one. Number two, destroy all that I could on the other side that wanted to maintain that format. Number three was to bring all the information I said I would, as Quetzalcoatl, Pahana, uh, and I don't know how many other lives. Um, I kept saying I would come back and give you the knowledge of what's real on the other side. Um, I, um, Ket, uh, Quetzalcoatl, I was a, uh, a real tall, slender but strong uh, white uh, um a uh, young king had a beard and everything, um, uh, and I could literally levitate. And I put, I'd levitate myself on top of those uh, flat top pyramids, and then I talk to the people a thousand or more at a time. That's why they call. That's where the, the Quetzalcoatl came from. It's like a serpent because I was grounded. I was a healer, and I was knowledgeable. But the wings are just because I could levitate. You know that was, and I was made so I could levitate. Just you know, and that had to be allowed to happen. It, none that's of that the way, stuff and that's the way they represented it in the art and the um, yeah. However, they could yeah, it, present it's, it. it. It's yeah, it's like uh, the ninth Incan ruler, Pachacuti Inca Yupanqui. That was me. And if you look that up, you look at the legend of the stone soldiers. Which it said when it was time to protect uh, whatever this uh, uh, Cusco, whatever the place was. I can't remember. I, I'm not good with names. But it was time to protect it. There was 313 men and myself, and there was an army of 6,000 at the bottom of the hill, and they were coming up. Well, as Incas, we were big builders, had walls, a big stone everywhere. And I knew I was going to be able to kick some butt when this happened. And the original mother, of course, she was around, and she said, Tomorrow you're going to be this and that and everything, whatever. So um, she released enough of my energy through me when they finally came up and to attack us. I levitated about 500 boulders with my right hand, 500 with the left, and I literally threw them in between each other like this, killing. I mean, within, I don't know, within 60 seconds, I destroyed about 1,600 soldiers. I, I ripped them up. I mean, could you imagine a 65 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour of 500 pound or 100 pound boulder, boulders going in between everybody? They ran. And, and that was the end of the battle. Um, and so, uh, and the legend says that I called the stone soldiers to come fight with us. No, I just want telekinetic. That's all. I'm, you know, um, <laughs> telekinetic. That's all. No, wait a minute. Yeah, you, still, you still didn't answer my question. Uh, I'm sorry. I haven't finished. Uh, the but part, I, the I, part I, yeah, that I, I really want to know about is, is it really true that we all, honest to goodness, pick these crappy childhoods where we're sodomized, we, raped, we, tortured. No, 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 no. no remember, remember what I was saying, that we put our life together, and then when we get in it, then all of a sudden the original mother would say, okay, this is what you're going to have. So it's not as, it's not what we so, choose. Yeah, we, we, we say, I want this and this and that, and I want ice cream and a banana split. Okay, here you go. Eat nails. Um, as soon as they put you in the body. But then when you get out, then the original mother and father, original mother actually would say, 
see how you grown, see see what it did for you. Everybody liked getting bigger and stronger. And when when you're out of a body, you're no longer attached to that constant input of emotion. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you're holding on to a, a live wire, mm-hmm. when you let go, it's like, wow, that was no fun. Right. But while you're holding on to it, it's like, holy crap. Yeah. It, it, it's the same basic kind of concept. Again, simple. Interesting. Um, uh, yeah. It, it, so, so we have we really had no idea what we were going to land in. We yeah, thought we were and, actually going into a, a a much more peaceful environment. That's what we usually expect. However, after time, we we were aware that we were going to get slammed a little bit. But you know what? When you know that you're going to grow and you're going to come home and you're going to be okay, and you're no longer attached to that immediate constant impulse of uh, uh, emotions and all that physical stuff, you kind of forget about it. You forget about all the abuse you went through. Mm. You know you're going to get hammered a little bit, but you say to yourself, end result, I came out bigger, stronger. And also, the more you've done it, the more these little um, abusive frequencies were gathering inside you, which was making everybody a little bit like this. I was. It's funny what history doesn't tell you. It's always made to glorify certain people. They say history is written by, by the victors. Well, you know it is, but that needs to stop. It needs to just be what it is. Leave it alone. Let people make up their own decision. Hey, that's a little bit like what I do. I tell you what's going on. I tell you so much stuff about me, myself, even my personal life. Um, why does he do this? Isn't he afraid people think, no, I'm not afraid of nothing, number one. Number two... I told you I'd come here and do this life after life after life. Okay, not every not every life after each other consecutively, but a whole lot of lives. Okay, Pahana, that was me. Okay, Quetzalcoatl, that was me. Uh, Pakal, that was me. I've had plane in Egypt. Let's not even go there. It's like OJ thinks he's been everyone important. No, I've had lives that really sucked. Most all of them do. Um, uh, the original first being male and female, they want to control everything. They were very abusive. These blue spheres, they are here to help. Um, the blue kachina, the great blue kachina star, there is like a blue kachina star way, 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 way that we can finally see. There's also the blue spheres that everyone's now becoming aware of. Gee... I wonder if that's part of the Hopi prophecy. Bingo. The blue kachina, um, there's two things. We were able to finally see a blue star far away. And, you know, one burning that was coming through, it was put into the media. Okay, so we were made aware of it. It's always been there, but we were made aware of it because it was time for people to be aware of it. Number one. Number two is the blue spheres. Okay? So, that's the uh, the basic end of the information I was given for the Hopi prophecy. Um, not wanting to talk about myself, but one of the things was, one of my lives was Pahana. Um, the, you know, legends and all this stuff, people that, you know, they're, they're never correct. You know, um, there's good information in and out of them, but uh, it's never like that. Um, anyway, uh, but with Hopi Prophecy, that was important, and that was good information. And we're at the end now. Tier's really cool. He's really busy. He's trying to figure out how to do some things, and no Tier, I'm stopping right there. Um, he's an incredibly strong ter- telepath. Man, he's awesome. Um he uh, he's one of these uh, he's quote unquote a blue avian which is really uh, one of the new types of antids they're not blue with feathers they're not humanoid they're insectoid okay they don't lie to us to come over and take control or anything these wonderful incredibly loving benevolent people have been taking care of us so long the original antids um the ones uh, the ones that like to really stay in the earth these other folks tier and all the newer generation they like to just fly around i mean they like cruising around exploring okay whereas the original antids really burrowed into the earth 
and you know relax uh, in the Hopi prophecies and stuff um, you know, the Hopi people they have legends um, of the, uh, in the um, uh, uh, I'm thinking of these other Indian names. I can't even say them. You know how I am with names. I'm just not good at all. Anyway, um, Zuni. Okay. Um, they talk about the ant mounds. Okay. The ant mounds said, you know, like they go look, they'll go looking for pyramids and stuff like that. Eh, there's something going on there. But honestly, um, uh, the ant mounds are, you know, usually caves and mountains where they have literally you go down in, in toward deep deeper into the earth uh the red atom uh here in this planet four times uh took all the people he could and went up to the antids as himself and said you know would, would you take the people would you take the children in and take care of them while the earth goes through changes the uh different stages of uh um a life uh, on this planet the different times at the the stages the different stages of civilization where it was you know destroyed brought back destroyed brought back that kind of thing here on the planet honestly i'm thankful that it's there by the way it was very important that it would be there for everybody that's one reason why things had to happen earth 2012 being centered around the planet and having the internet alive and kicking when this went down Although the, the first being male and female thought it was going to be to throw out the glory of Mother, Father, God. And instead it was about killing them and, and me spreading word about what's really going on, what really happened. Again, that's the word of uh, Pahana and uh, Quetzalcoatl. Um, chair, I swear, it makes all these cracks all the time. Um, when both, those are two lives um, that I said I would come back from the East. Um to bring the information and seeing how they were in uh, you know Central uh, America and uh, the center of the U.S. Uh, the le um, Western Center, Central U.S. Uh, being in Atlanta, I'm in the East. Um, I'm sorry, I'm that part of my the human body, that spirit is there's still some of it in me, and it just started coming out again, just like it did a previous video. It's these. Uh, that part of me, that part of what I am is talking with me. See, things of spirit get a little weird, okay? There's a lot to it. Um, and the bigger you get it, does it's not glorifying or something special, something it's more to deal with. Um, and everybody was overgrown so that they could release more beings. So that actually caused other problems. But those abuse frequencies is what really went nuts, uh, hurting people making them grow big and kind of uh, aggressive. It's like being on steroids or something, I guess. But uh, um, uh, worse than that, it was the arrogance. The arrogance that everybody's been taught life after life after life. Um, the, the Duluth area, uh, just uh, north of Atlanta. And uh, uh, I'm trying to finish writing some books, some information that uh, I told you all that I'd leave you as Pahana Quetzalcoatl, or that's not how you say the names, it's Pahana and Quetzalcoatl, um, whatever, J, Joe, who cares. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so there's all kinds of information I'm going to be dropping you dropping on you whatever you you want to do with it great love you man i mean uh, um, i said i'd do it and i give it to you uh and things will change and it will get better because it's going to our friends in space are our family okay they've been protecting us for a little over a million years they're going to come down and say hi but you can go back into hopi law uh lore excuse me yellow worry uh about the ant people and I remember this, where the people literally were brought together to a certain area, and then the antids took them down into the earth. So, that happened with the end of the first and the end of the second age. So, uh, the earth was boiling over with lava and everything else. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and a lot of the people came out. Uh, the fourth age was 1.1 million to 800,000 uh, years ago, and the 
that's not to the year, okay? But it gets you right there in the in the area. Fifth age, seven hundred fifty thousand years ago to uh, uh, December twenty first, twenty twelve. Okay, well, there's uh, from 750,000 to 800,000. That's a 50,000 uh, year gap. What happened? That's the Earth transforming. Um, you've heard about uh, in the Hopi legends and stuff about there's some crazy guy, a uh, real powerful being, came down here and um, he went to the ant people and he asked the ant people, well, they say I told them, but whatever. Um, but he told the uh, uh, man people, he asked the man people to go ahead and uh, uh, take care of these humans that he could find. So they took him down below the crust. The ant heads have been here for well over 11, well over 12 million years. It goes back farther than that. Um, but what I'm talking about, the, the actual civilization put on top of the planet, that's just under 11 million years. 10.572 million years ago was when the Red Adam came here and started the Red Adam and Eve and then the other four Adams and Eves. And that's when the Fey bodies were made here too. Um, stones. Stone energy helps. I've told you all about a lot of different stones and you know the strongest stone there is to help you wake up is this right here. This is some star arsenite, but this is extreme. This isn't high crystal. This is almost complete. Well, it is really complete crystal. It's a very strong piece. If you notice that little brown on the corner there, that's the coating that's on dragon egg star arsenite. This is a little piece of dragon egg star arsenite crystal, but it's been out and weathered. It's actually broken off, weathered outside. It changes the energy just a little bit, not much. It, it, you hold this. For me, it goes right in the spine. The core energy starts filling up. Now that's strange. I got all kinds of stuff coming at me now. That just, it fired me up and it made me, you know, like open my eyes, like waking up in the morning, getting out of bed, you have a cup of coffee, next thing you know, you're starting to wake up. If you take that 20 minutes and you turn it into uh, tw uh, 10 seconds, that's what it's like. Um, I told Deanna that uh, there's a ship coming here pretty soon. Uh, it's already on the way. going to pay a little visit. Um, Shiny's on there and uh, Molly. Um, I can't, I can't I, you know I suck with names man. I just not worth a damn when it comes to names. Um, anyway uh, she's so sweet. She's so precious. She's one of these Serpacians. That's the name they gave us. Um, uh, they're a form of the antid, but the antid slash mantid, it's, it's not mantid, it's antid, but a lot of them looks like a praying mantis. Um, there are actual insectoids that are praying mantises, okay, which those are mantids. These, uh, these antids are different. I don't have a name for them. I use antid because that's what we call them in, uh, as the Hopi. Anyway, um, uh, she's really cool. They they have an incredible understanding of biology, but it's not just that, uh, bodies too. Uh, I mean, uh, botany. But it's not just botany, it's biology, bodies too. Um, anyway, they're coming by. The visit has to do with the new kids that are coming. Anyway, uh, if there's a huge stone like Nibhu, not Nibiru, but Nibhu, um, it, it's, a, it's a rock. It's never had life in it. <clears throat> so that being the case, it, uh, um, it's got life on it. It's, it's not going to hit us. Uh, there's a race that's in there now. They're called the Sapacian. They're problematic Anunnaki. 
uh, before they came here to the, uh, I was going to say to the U.S., to the earth. Um, and they're, they, they were here in massive density. There's still a good bit of them here. Um, uh, before they were here, they'd be on Nebu, and as Nebu has a weird elliptical orbit, and they just like pirates take off from there, raid other places, almost like the old Vikings here. But now the Cypacean are there, it's like the Naantids. <coughs> the Hopi book talks about the Antids, the same beings. Anyway, um, so the Anunnaki, uh, they're cool people. We just had some problematic ones here. They were not the Sumerian gods. As I said earlier, that was the Enog. Short, about four foot tall. Um, I explain all this in another video I'm going to release. Uh, in just a little bit, of, but I talk about all the different uh, ones that I'm aware of. There's, well, over, there's over 200 races that are here right now. Uh, on the planet, right around the planet doing stuff. But these are people I know. These are people I talk with. Some of them daily. But just so you know and, you know, take this and do what you want with it. Um, we've had, there's bases, underground bases that have been all over the planet. There's, uh, by the governments, uh, working with uh, some of the uh, Anunnaki folk that are here. Um, you have other places, tunnels and stuff like the Antids. Uh, call them Antids. Um, and again, that comes from uh, um, Hopi lives that I've had. Um, and being in there directly with them, I, I speak of them as you'll find in the uh, Hopi uh, uh, history. Okay. Um, th their thought uh, process of the history is not correct, but... Uh, um, the basics behind it is, and the fact about the uh, people being brought to the Antids by some really strong, weird being. Um, uh, they brought them down there to the Antids, and the Antids kept them alive while the Earth was going through major change. That happened. But they're like a cross between Antid uh, uh, and Ant, um, and a praying man is more Ant-like, but I don't know. It's Maybe more praying man is like, they have their own name. They'll give it to us when it's time. I, I got the name. I can't, that's not, you know, I can't put it in English. I have a hard enough time with three letter names. Anyway, uh, uh, They, they've been living here in tunnels. You have other races that have been here for millions of years, living down inside the earth. There's no hollow earth and all that stuff, folks. It's crap. But um, there uh, are tunnels and stuff. There's small uh, facilities that have been made, mostly going straight down. Um, sometimes straight down through a tunnel, then opened up a little bit uh, underneath Antarctica. Uh, there's a huge ship over a million years old that's been down there forever. It's covered with ice. And, yes. They have to do maintenance all the time for to, to maintain structural uh, uh, integrity. That's what's under Antarctica. That's what's going on there. So. They're the good guys, folks. That's the good guys. I don't know who it was, Buzz Aldrin, or some guy, that old astronaut, he, uh, evil is, evil itself is in Antarctica. So, oh, dude, man, take some Geritol, some Xanax, and go to sleep. Um, no, they're the ones that, have been, they're, they're literally a force of good that's been here on the planet, helping out where it can, without getting too involved. And there's another lady, uh, a so patient, uh, they're antids, uh, antids, mantids. It's, it's a cross. I don't. I just say antids because one of my lives. I hate to say it, was Pahana. Okay, and I talked about that. I was also involved with the ant people every time the Earth was going through a change. And they would take people down in there and they'd take care of them. 
down into the ground. <sighs> the Entids were here on this planet while everything was changing. And then they left in mass a long time ago. Now there's just a few of them that came back to, to fight. Some of them stayed here, but most all of them left. Then a few of them came back. The ones that came back were soldiers. So uh, the Nantid, um, uh, it's Antids is what it usually was in Hopi, Hopi lore, um, uh, L-O-R-E, lore. Um, my pronunciation isn't too good, and especially recently. But uh, they, uh, they talk about the ant people. Take a little time to look at those legends. It's true. Um, who's that famous Admiral Byrd, B-Y-R-D, that found the hollow earth. He found a, a cave to go into to get out of the cold to keep from dying, and they ran right into a, a antid, actually an antid um, a colony. And he he wound, he was in there, literally, against the wall, all dirty and everything else, being kept warm. And he was dreaming all this stuff. There were three nantids right there in his head, showing him all these wonderful things. Um, they did not want anyone to see what was really there. The blue avian um, that Corey Good talks about. El Ra to ear, what? Well, no, it's to ear. Okay, he's he's a nantid. As a matter of fact, I kept saying nantid, and I was talking to him one time. I was being rude. Um, I don't mean to be. I'm tired. I'm worn out from all the fighting. Now this body's just about dead, you know. Um, but when I was doing this, I wasn't polite enough to look at. I saw him, I just went right to him. I wasn't polite enough to see if he was busy doing something, and he was. And he wasn't too happy about that, and of course, you know, for that he's, he'll always have my apology, but uh, uh, I said, look, you gotta give me something better than ant. Uh, that's wrong, it's in incomplete, because you don't just look like ants. And he kind of quickly said, ant it. I'm like, okay. And then, you know, kind of like, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, Wait till you find out what y'all can do. Um, and it's part of you. It's natural. It's not a gift from God. No, it's you. It's who you are. Um, it's as natural as this once you know you can do it. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's what that, you know, hollow earth thing is about. Hollow earth, I might have said flat earth. I don't know. It's the hollow earth thing. Uh, now, back to the Sapacient. Deanna and I were working so hard trying to get the syllables of the name. And then when we finally got the word together, Sapacient, and we were trying to see I, E, A, and everything, and their, they, they, uh, their race grew from the original Antids. It, it just evolved separately from them. Um, and the, the Sapacient, the uh, Antids have always have usually on this planet been called antids. Why? Uh, go back into the Hopi religion when the uh, the earth was uh, having some rough times. Uh, it would go through, uh, it needed to be cleansed and uh, the original uh, male uh, and female, first, the original first beings, male and female, they needed to get rid of all the reptiles that were here on this planet. They had to do a cleansing. So there's, there's more to it than that, but not much more. The main thing was getting rid of the reptiles. There were so many of them, they bred so quickly uh, that they were just killing everything. So anyway, uh, so in the, with the Hopi religion, um, the, Ho the Hopi pro the Hopi times, uh, pro prophecies, uh, their their history, everything they talked about when uh, there's one strong male being that came here and made a body and literally led a large amount of people to the antids, to the tunnels. And he said to the antids, you know, would you please take care of the people, take them down into the earth. It's time for the earth to change again. So they did. 
and they fed them and everything else. That's the antids. That's the second oldest race in creation in the uh, physical dimension, third dimension. Um, so uh, that's where they came from. But they prefer, instead of like the original antids, they love to burrow into a planet and stay there and live there, okay? They were on the Gera. Okay. So, the first race of beings in creation's history, physical beings, were the Drock. And I've explained how I know about that firsthand, Lily and I. And uh, then after that is the Antis. So, and none of the things came out. The original human race, this type of body. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, that came out um, pretty a bit of a while later after that did. But anyway, getting away from the point. Um, the Serpacian race, they don't want to burrow into a planet. They want to be out in space. Creation itself, folks, is finally turning into family. On the other side, second dimension, uh, over here. In the physical or third dimension. So. That's what's going on. The Dronica have brought this kind of a. This kind of abuse here. The Xenog. The Enog. Whatever. Um, the Drak Have brought them down to almost nothing. I mean to where it's like. Almost impossible to happen. And then the antids are very busy involved in doing things. They're called antids. They they kind of look more like a praying mantis, but their their arms are not totally different. And they said antids. That was said of them a long time ago. And that's why the Hopi relate to them in that same way. They were helping uh, Captain Bird. BYRD, and when he thought he was seeing the inner earth, it, they were incredibly powerful telepaths. And there's usually about three of them that were with them all the time. This wonderful village he thought he saw. No, he, he did see some inner workings. Uh, um, they say cities. What's a city? There's towns or cities here in the U.S. that have, what, five people? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, those caverns and stuff, and, and you know, under the uh, uh, ground where they go in deep. That's where the um, the people that they wanted that were being saved when each time the earth went through a major change four times. First was fire and volcanoes and stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Second was the same, third was ice, fourth was water. The fourth one happened at the beginning of the uh, fifth age, so to speak. It's funny how that happens, and it's over a long period of time. Period of time, blah. Um, the uh, caustic events that happened on the planet they blend in between two different uh, ages. It's not like these things happen in a day. Anyway, uh, uh, that's Gaia cleaning herself, and also she evolves too. But these four were done on purpose. Mostly, most always getting rid of the reptiles, the actual dinosaur reptile things. There's caves now out in the West, the U.S., as well as other places where they're actually finding ancient pict pictorial, gra pic pic pictorial graphs or something, pictures of humans that were made literally throwing spears at dinosaurs. That's from the beginning of the Fifth Age. It's like to ear, uh, the man antid, mantid, uh, you know, uh, we call them antids. Uh, I use that because, uh, you know, um, as Pahana, um, or excuse me, Pahana, uh, that's a crazy way to say it, huh? It's like, I have a hard time with J, one letter. Um, they, uh, 
that's what we talked about. That's what they were called, the antids. Uh, it was their word for us to use. Um, some of those guys, they're like 10 foot tall. But anyway, um, what I was bringing this up for to ear, he's an incredibly powerful uh, telepath. He's the one that Corey Good calls uh, the blue avian. Rock mm. to ear, rock to ear, blah, 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 whatever. It's to ear. Um, uh, they're really strong, incredibly powerful telepaths, but still, as evolved as their species is, as strong as the telepathic abilities, they've not been allowed. Their bodies have been made where they can't see the other side like they want to. You know, uh-huh. it's, it, it was you had to have that barrier there because what happened if everybody could see what was going on the other side? The original male and female, you know, putting people in the bodies and then beating the hell out of them and then controlling everything else over there. If everybody could actually see that the way I can, the way... As uh, you know, some some people can hear. Um, uh, everybody would be saying like, "Whoa!" And you wouldn't have many people going to church. They'd be staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't have that. You gotta have the praise, Almighty God. Uh, which you know that's slowing down. But see, that's part of the whole deal: is people waking up, like you all already know. You know, people waking up and seeing themselves things for themselves. Yeah. That's where we yeah. find our own truth. Can yeah. we talk with each other about it? We help teach each other? They want you to know that they're here. And this is a slow progression to when you finally see um, the out-of-towners, folks from other planets. Just like uh, Tair. <coughs> also Mantid. Mantid, Mantid. I, I wish I had a better word, but we call them the Antids. Um, it's between me and him it, it, it's because it was a hopey way and he and I were close then too when I was Pahana in the body of Pahana let me put it like that I told Connie she needed to get her act together she started giving me a hard time and I said you gotta get your act together I said among other things I said for you I'm a test and uh, she had problems. She was arrogant, um, had real issues. Um, when I was Pahana, uh, she was my daughter, her spirit. And uh, she had the same issues then. She still can't get over it. Aggressive, controlling, arrogant. So um, she had a shit fit that I was, you know, I have my own psychics that talk to people. I, I don't care. This tsunami's coming. Unless something stops it, this tsunami's coming. I had to get a hold of two people and talk to them to tell them this tsunami wasn't coming. I mean, to tell them to tell them this tsunami was coming, and I wanted it. I wanted to stop it. I had to do whatever I could to stop it. I talked to one person who was Andromedia. All right, they're just. It's a ship. I, I already saw the ship that they're on. Um, there's a lot of. Um, they have a lot of passion. Uh, um, guys saying, please don't blow them up. I said, honey, I'm not. I'm just talking. Oh, blow up their heads. Okay. Um, okay. Um, they they used to be down here um, a lot when uh, I was Pahana. Uh, uh, even way back into the days of the earliest uh, Pueblo Indians. Uh after the uh, end, uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, fifth stage of evolution here, um, they're having problems. In their race is having a hard time, and I told them, "I'll help you," you, you know, personally. And I said, "Azara, I will fix your problem. I s- promise. I give you my honor, my word, Azara. I will take care of this, and I will talk with you in just a minute." And we'll do something here to help. But I said, you will not do this. I said, if you want to talk with this lady, I said, you go ahead and go up to her and you offer something that she accepts. And then that's up to her. But you will never do that again. And there's a couple couple of them had a question. You know, I, a couple of my questioned whether or not they do something. And one guy said, you know, frack it. As soon as he's out of my head, I'm going. So I went into his head and he bled out a little bit. And then, then I let go. And I said, look, I love you, old man, but I love her, too. I said, I love everybody. It's not right. You don't have the right. And I said, I told you, I'm going to fix this. Um, you, your, your race will not die. Stop. 
you know, I won't let you do that to her and I won't let anything happen to you. And they're like, and they felt that. And I was like, okay, good, boom. They finally stopped. Then the fifth age went right into the sixth age. But each time there is this one being, the same one. Well, that guy must be old, huh? That met with the antids and brought people to them. And they took the people down into the earth and then he came back out. Look at your Hopi legends. I wasn't Pahana without reason. 